A few months ago, I talked about an obscure missing kids show known as the Pink Morning Cartoon. At the time, there was very little known about the show, besides a few online threads and discussions. From the few clips that were available online, I found the series to be pretty unsettling, but also fascinating. And apparently, I wasn't alone. A dedicated search team formed from the heels of that video in order to hopefully track down more information and episodes from this strange piece of lost media. So today, we'll be diving down this rabbit hole to see what was uncovered. This is the search for the Pink Morning Cartoon. Before we move forward, I'd like to thank the PMC search team for compiling this information for me. In this video, I will try to encompass what was given to me, as well as my own research. I was invited to their Discord a few times, and while I'd love to join, I'm always afraid I might derail the search with my presence. I always think it's best just to leave the investigators do their thing. Also, I'll be going off of the information from my last video, so check that out if you're not up to speed. But to summarize, on April 3rd, 2020, a post was made on the obscure media subreddit by a user known as Rubbed Lung about an anonymous bizarre public access morning kids show, later to be known as Pink Morning Cartoon. Let's have a look. This first video seems to be a clip taken from one of their episodes. We see a family entering a hat room before the hats begin to move and sing. The second clip is titled using a bunch of question marks, and is only a shorter, lower quality version of the first clip we saw, so we'll just skip it. By far the most well-known clip from the Pink Morning cartoon is this final one, featuring a song known as Everything's Coming Up Spring. The only small bits of information available was from what little online discussion there was, and from the uploader of these clips, Jankum Chick. He claimed that he would see the show play in the early mornings of the 90s and 2000s. On Reddit, user Rub Lung stated that the show aired in Columbus, Ohio, and that it was a homemade religious show for children. Some users from the Lost Media Wiki believed that the most likely channels this show aired on or Channel 2, or Channel 53. Besides that, no one seemed to know anything else about the show. There were no names attached to the program, no information about that creepy song. We didn't even know its official name. Pink Morning Cartoon is simply what everyone referred to it as. It became a mystery, and for a while, it remained a mystery. Clearly these clips are pretty unsettling, but 
also somewhat fascinating, and I wasn't alone on thinking that. The fact that they were uploaded years before the Reddit post made me believe that it was unlikely to be an ARG or a hoax. However, after my video came out, some people began to think that it was a hoax or constructed by Jankum Chick himself. I thought that could be a possibility, given that the fade in and fade out transitions seemed odd for a video that was supposedly not edited. Furthermore, others questioned how Jankum Chick obtained this footage. He claimed that it was on an old VHS tape that he had, but how exactly? Were all three separate clips on a single VHS tape? Or was it originally one episode that Jankum did edit into three separate clips? Or perhaps they were from three separate VHS tapes? No one really knew. Others thought the VHS static and poor quality were manufactured or edited in. Finally, there were inconsistencies within these tapes that others began to take note of. How is it that Jankum Chick had two versions of the hat room scene, one with better quality than the other? Also, some of the transitions and scenes didn't match up, and even the audio was slightly off. Regardless, people began searching for more information about Pink Morning Cartoon, and much to my surprise, a lot was uncovered. One of the most captivating things about Pink Morning Cartoon is its song, Everything's Coming Up Spring. So it makes sense that the search began there. Some viewers claimed that the singer's voice sounded like Ron Brown, a ventriloquist from another religious public access show, Joy Junction. That's right, Marty. You know, I was just looking around here. Maybe I'll think of something I can talk to Jerry's dad about, but I was noticing all these flags here in Joy Junction. The only problem with this theory is that in 2013, Ron was sentenced to 20 years in prison on CP charges. The whole story is pretty messed up and won't be detailed here. Needless to say, this was pretty much a dead end. A YouTube channel called The Inspector posted this comment on the Everything's Coming Up Spring video. I'm pretty sure this isn't from public access, but from a religious satellite broadcast provider known as Sky Angel. They're defunct now, but they have been going since 1996, and I grew up with all these really obscure, low-budget Christian shows they aired. This was likely one of them. I don't think that's a tip that'll lead anywhere for anyone interested in mysteries, if you're here from Blame It On George, but that's just where I think I saw it. Though I wouldn't be surprised if it was also on public access, because honestly, Sky Angel original programming did sometimes come from there, or at least look like it did. Try as I might, it's almost impossible to find most segments, especially from their kids' channel. I'm shocked whenever I find anything at all that's been preserved. Later on, a 2002 promo for Sky Angel was found, and it contained a brief image of what appeared to be a show for children. Some wondered if this was perhaps taken from Pink Morning Cartoon. Sky Angel operated a channel known as KTV, or Kids and Teen TV, so it made for a good starting point in the search. By looking through KTV's schedule at around the time Pink Morning Cartoon would have supposedly aired, a show known as Critter Time was found. Critter Time aired in the early mornings on KTV, and could explain all the animals seen in the Everything's Coming Up Spring video. However, searchers were also able to dig up the show's description, and it reads, For ages 4 to 11, Jenny K takes children on adventures to visit exotic animals, also features segments on caring for house pets. This didn't seem to match up with the house room clip. There didn't appear to be a character named Jenny, and there was next to nothing about how to care for house pets. In fact, after looking through their archives, none of their shows had a description that matched Pink Morning Cartoon. So Sky Angel was quickly ruled out.
It was around this time that a Discord group dedicated to finding the Pink Morning cartoon was forming. The team decided to look through various different TV stations in Columbus, one of which being WINJLP. This station was owned by a person named Ella Flowers and is known for playing a variety of programs, such as old public domain movies, old cartoons, and current religious programs. What's interesting to know is that an old version of this article from 2005 says, The station is notable for its erratic technical quality, which often imparts a bizarre, disjointed, and surreal texture to its programming. For whatever reason, this line was removed in future revisions of the article, but stood out to the search team nonetheless. Pink Morning Cartoon could definitely be described as bizarre, disjointed, and having erratic technical quality. Jankum Chick himself joined the Discord, adamantly believing in the show's existence. When questioned about how he obtained these clips, Jankum explained that he and his friend, Maria Ork, had a hobby of recording shows and making mixtapes out of them. Jankum planned on uploading more recordings, but he was out of town for the time being. His friend, however, uploaded this screenshot. This screenshot is of the credits from one of Pink Morning Cartoon's episodes. It's a little hard to read, but we can see that the music is credited to someone named Ella Flowers. If you recall, the station WINJLP was owned by Ella Flowers. Ella is a pastor and a singer-songwriter who actually narrated some of the kids' programming on that channel. So, this seemed like a solid lead. All that was needed to do now was to contact Ella in the hopes of uncovering more episodes. If only it were that simple. Searchers were quick to discover an obituary for Ella Flowers online. It notes that she passed away on July 17th, 2017. As previously stated, one of the stations Ella owned was WINJLP, so perhaps looking through it would be our best bet. By searching through WINJLP schedule at around the date and time Pink Morning Cartoon would have aired, a cartoon known as Kids Fun Festival stood out. With this discovery, one of the admins from the Discord team was able to find an archived Columbus Dispatch article from 1999. The article states, During the day, Programming includes Kids Club, a mission for Ella Flowers. Recently she has worked late into the night, and sometimes all night, on a cartoon for the show. Toiling at a bank of computers across from a fish tank in her living room, she remembers stories from her childhood and adapts them for Kate and Jeannie Jokers. Do those names ring a bell to you? If you remember, the kids in the Pink Morning cartoon clip are named Kate and Jean. This not only confirms the validity of this show, but also that the real name of Pink Morning Cartoon is actually the TV8 Kids Fun Fest. For whatever reason, the article called it Kids Club, but the team later learned of its full name. Unfortunately, the Central Ohio Association OF Christian Broadcasters, which bought the WING station, now known as WGCT, did not retain any old programming from WINJ. Despite another dead end, the search was at an all-time high. Through Ella's obituary and the Archive Columbus Dispatch article, more leads and contact information was gathered. It seemed like more episodes of the TV8's Kids Fun Festival was close to being found. Contact was made with Ella Flowers' daughter, Angela Francis. After being shown the Everyday's Coming Up Spring video, Angela said, Yes, that was my mom. Do you know any others? This is wonderful. After being asked if there were any more recordings available, she replied, They've been missing ever since my mother passed. But thank you, it means so much. My mother wrote and did the animation for these as well as the editing. It was called the TV8 Kids Fun Fest. Unknown amount of episodes, my mom worked constantly on these. Maya hosted the show, 
kids loved it. Moreover, an interview was conducted with Ellis's granddaughter, Samantha, who joined the Discord server. The interview is quite long, so I'll be showing the most important bits here. Do you think it's likely tapes exist? They definitely do. She had many shelves full of tapes. I know of 10 different ones off the top of my head. My favorite one she kept making for me was The Adventures of Kate and Jean Joker. You have no idea how far we've searched for this thing. Do you know where the tapes are? Unfortunately, when I talked to my mom about an hour ago, she said they were stolen by a cousin who was planning on selling them and then got trashed and possibly destroyed out of spite by said cousin. They were her pride and joy, and that was a big hurt. Is there a way there's a backup? Well, it was the 90s, and I'm pretty sure it would have been on a floppy disk with the original designs and such. And the VHS, that's it. Do you know the cousin who stole the tapes? Yes, but no one has talked to him in a while. I'm not even sure if anyone knows where he is. Do you remember any of Ella's other shows? All I can remember was the adventures of Kate and Jean Joker. That was my favorite of hers, and I know she made at least four or five different shorts of full stories of them. Throughout their conversation, it was clear that the searchers wanted to remain as respectful as possible to Ella's memory. Are you surprised of the major attention towards your grandmother and her show? Yes. You know when you're a kid and you kind of don't expect these things? I just remember as a kid sitting there with her, watching her make them, and laughing and having fun. And now to see this as a big thing and see how people are responding towards her various works brings me a lot of joy. I just wish she were here to see this herself. It's nice to see her memory carried on. As of the writing of this video, that's where the search ends for now. We know the name of the show, the creator of it, Ella Flowers, and a rough idea of how many episodes there are. Even though the original tapes were destroyed by one of their family members, hope is not lost. The search team is still in contact with Ella's family, which is a promising lead. They also plan on visiting the church that Ella worked at in hopes of finding archives of the cartoon. Jankum Chick is planning on uploading more recordings in a few months. The Columbus Dispatch article does mention a Christmas special featuring a dancing snowman. This is the only other episode the team knows anything about. If there are any future updates, I'll be sure to let you guys know. I'm not sure what to expect from here on out, but I'm personally extremely proud of the search efforts that have gone into finding the show. It's stuff like this that makes Lost Media such an awesome part of the internet. Until then, I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.